Okay, in this video, let's focus on x to the square root of x power when x is exactly equal to 0 and when x is approaching 0 from the right-hand side. Namely, we take the limit as x approaching 0 plus. And let's do this one right here first. When we have to calculate f of 0, this right here, you have to remember, the 0 means we have exact 0. So, you are going to just plug in exact 0 into all the x that you see. So, we will see, we will get 0 for the base. And the power will be square root of 0. And of course, square root of 0 is just 0. So we have 0 for the base, and then 0 for the power. And now, here is the typical problem that people have, especially once you get into calculus all the stuff. Here, we are not doing calculus at all. This is just a computational question, 0 to the 0. And unfortunately, this right here is undefined, meaning that we do not have an answer for 0 to the 0 power. That's it. Done deal. Nothing else. Okay? Now, if we are doing calculus, if we are talking about limit, the limit as x approaching 0 plus of the function right here. This right here, we actually end up with a nice answer. And by the way, the reason I put down x approaching 0 plus is because we cannot have 0 minus. 0 minus is like x is approaching 0 from the left-hand side, so x has to be negative. Well, as we can see, square root of a negative number, it's not real, so we can have that. And another reason is because when we have a negative base to a function power, that doesn't make sense neither. So we just focus on 0 plus in this case, okay? Now, when we are doing this, this is what we should do. Well, putting 0 plus into all the x first, and it's going to look like this. So I will write down 0 plus, and then raise to the square root of 0 plus power. This expression and that expression are very different. First of all, this 0 plus, you can just imagine this is like a number that's slightly bigger than 0. This is like 0 0.0000001. And so is that. And imagine when you put this into this and that, you are not doing this at all. So in fact, you can actually <laughs> you may have an answer for that, for, for this, right? So, this is what we have. Very different than that. However, though, when people are calculating the limit in calculus, unfortunately, when we do this kind of thing sometimes, we still just put in 0 to the 0's power like that. It's convenient. So, you have to remember, if you just write down 0 to the 0's power in this situation, in the limit question right here, this right here, this form, is what we call the indeterminate form. And in fact, there are a total of seven indeterminate forms. This is just one of them. What does this mean? This means that we have to do more work in order to figure out the answer. On the exams, do not just write down, do more work. You have to do more work, and let me see the work and also the answer, right? So, when you see 0 to a 0 in the limit question, you have to remember it's this idea this situation. And I will show you guys the work that we have to do to figure this out, right? So let's focus on that right here. Uh, I will show you guys two ways to do it. First way, this is perhaps the more natural way, if, especially if you're doing calculus for the first time for this kind of limit. I will first code this right here to be L to some other constants limit. I will say that L equal to that limit, which is the limit as x approaching 0 plus of x to the square root of x power. The main reason we have to do this is because we have a function for the base and a function for the power. Call this to be something else so we can take the natural log on both sides. Right? And that's usually how we deal with 0 to a 0 power in determinant form as well. Right? Well, from here, as I said, I will take the natural log on both sides. So let's put our natural log here. And uh, on the left hand on the right hand side, there we go. On the right hand side, I will take the natural log of the limit, but the natural log of the limit it's the same as the limit of the natural log. So I can actually do this because natural log is a continuous function. Right? So that's how we can do. So just focus on this part and then you bring the power to the front. So that would be nice. 
you won't have a function to a function power anymore. And let's just focus on this real quick. This is the limit as x approaching 0 plus. And now we have square root of x times natural log of x. And check this out. If I plug in 0 plus into here and here, let me just do this on the side for you guys. We will have square root of 0 plus times ln 0 plus, like that. Well, square root of 0 plus is 0. You can just imagine square root of 0 is 0, so that's why it's just 0. And ln of 0 plus, well, if you look at the graph, this is the natural log of x. When x is approaching 0 from the right-hand side, the y value goes to negative infinity. So we have 0 times negative infinity. This right here is another indeterminate form situation. Unfortunately, we'll have to keep doing more work, right? And this is how we are going to fix that. Remember, to use Lapidot's rule, we have to get either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. We have 0 times infinity. If I can somehow turn this 0 into infinity, it will be in good shape, right? So this is how we are going to make that happen. In fact, this is the same as saying the limit as x approaching 0 plus. Let me just take the square root of x, and I will bring this down, down. Let me show you. On the top, I still have ln x. I will bring this, instead of here, I will bring it down, and then down again. So I will get 1 over square root of x, like that. And if you look at this complex fraction, is equal to this. This is equal to that, right? So this is the things that we do a lot when you have this kind of indeterminate form. And now, do a quick check. When you plug in 0 plus into here, you get negative infinity. On the bottom, you get 1 over 0 plus. In the square root, still 0 plus. 1 over 0 plus is positive infinity. We get, zero, we get infinity over infinity situation, and the sign doesn't matter, because the most important thing is that we need to be able to use Lapidot's rule. So let's indicate this is the negative infinity over infinity situation. Once again, the sign doesn't matter. Lapidot's rule ready for right here. So to finish this, I will just take the limit, and then I will have to differentiate this. So I don't need to deal with the indeterminate form anymore, right? On the top, the derivative of x is just 1 over x. That's very nice. And on the bottom, let's do that right here on the side. To differentiate, 1 over square root of x. Of course, square root is the 1 half power, but it's in the denominator, so that's the same as x to the negative 1 half power, like that. So that's what we have to look at. And from here, take the power to the front. This time, we minus 1. This is the power rule for derivative. Earlier, this was just the natural law property for <laughs> that step, right? So, right here, we will have negative 1 half. And then the power is going to be negative 3 half for the x, right? So that will be in the denominator as well. So let me just put that down here, x to the 3 half power like this. And now, I will just multiply the top and bottom by this guy, because that will be the lowest common denominator. It's working out really nicely. So let me multiply top and bottom by 2x to the 3 half power, 2x to the 3 half power. On the bottom, here and here cancel out. And this is so nice. You see, this is the limit as x approaching 0 plus. Let's see, I have negative, okay, but this x is like saying x to the 2 over 2. This is x to the 3 over 2. So I can cancel this one out when we have a one half power here. All in all, I get negative 2, x to the 1 half power, meaning I have a square root of x. And when I plug in 0 into here, even though it's 0 plus, doesn't matter. Even though I have negative, doesn't matter. Negative 0 is still 0. Everything still going to be 0 anyway. 0. Right? But 0 is not the answer. L and L is 0. We were trying to find out what L, which is this limit, is. So let me write it down. We know L and L 
is 0 and I will have to do e to the both sides e to this, e to that side, so we can cancel that out so this means L, which is the limit that we were looking for as x approaching infinity well, x, x approaching 0 plus x to the square root of x this right here is equal to e to the zeroth power which is equal to 1 so if you're talking about this namely the limit as x approaching 0 plus x to the square root of x power this we will get 1 for the answer and this is the legitimate 1 right? once again don't get confused between 0 to the 0 being 1 versus 0 to the 0 being undefined you have to remember which situation you are doing this is calculus this is just a regular computation this 0 right here is exact 0 this 0 that you see right here right, in this limit situation it means like you have a small number right, that's really close to 0 like 0 0.0001 all that stuff right, so that's pretty much it you can end the video here but I will show you guys another way well, this is real quick way, second way. Actually, I'll just you know, leave this to you guys real quick. If you want to calculate the limit as x approaching 0 plus x to the square root of x power, this is what you do. Look at the base, which is x. We don't like to work with space x, we like to work with space e. So to fix that, what we do is, we can look at this as e, and we will have to write it as l and x. Why? E and L and cancel, this is still the same as x. And then I can take this to the square root of x power. I still have that right here, isn't it? And of course, we still have to take the limit after that. So this will be the rewrite. And of course, this time right here, we have this power and that power. We can multiply the powers. So this right here is the same as the limit as x approaching 0 plus and we will have e and then square root of x times ln x like that and check this out when you take the limit of e to the something this is the same as e to the limit of something so <laughs> it's the same idea because e to the something is a continuous function so this right here is the same as saying e to the limit of x to the so uh, the e to the limit as x approaching 0 plus of this part, which is the square root of x, times ln x. And doesn't this look familiar? Yes, it does, because it's just that, which is 0. This portion will give you 0. So in another word, you get e to the 0, and if you approach it this way, you end up with 1 right away. Right? So that's pretty much it. Okay, hopefully you guys all like this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and let me know. And in fact, when you are doing the indeterminate form with zero, over zero, with zero to the zero's power, you may end up with a different number besides one. I have another video for you guys. Be sure you guys go watch that. The link will be in the description, right? Anyway, hopefully you guys all like this video. And be sure to subscribe if you guys haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much. And as always, that's it.